Okay. Now, thank you everyone for uh, participating today in our our Zoom call. And we're calling it, Are You Ready for College? Thank you guys for being here today. No problem. No thank you problem. for having us. Great. I'm going to take this time now to introduce our panelists. Our first panelist is Ms. Jerisa Hawkins. She is a graduate of Hume Falk and is currently a sophomore at John Hopkins University. Her major is molecular and cellular biology. Thank you, Jerisa, for being here today. <laughs> our next person is Ms. Carly Freeman. Carly yeah. is actually, she was homeschooled. And now she is currently enrolled in Fordham University Lincoln Center. And she is a senior. And her major is film and film and TV. And she actually has a minor in mathematics. So thank you, Carly, for being here today. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Jared Hall. He is a graduate also of Hume Falk and is currently a junior at Middle Tennessee State University. And his major is music business. Thank you, Jared, for being here today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great. So, okay, guys, what I'm going to do, I have some questions that I'm going to ask you guys. I'm also going to be monitoring the chat just in case anybody jumps on to the Zoom call and has some questions. I will call your name out, uh, get you to answer the particular questions. We ask that you keep them uh, to two minutes apiece. And if y'all don't have any questions for me, we're going to go ahead and get started. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Good. All right. <clears throat> now, I have an opening question for you guys. Jerisa, what were your feelings and or thoughts when you found out that your campus was closing due, due to COVID-19? Um, I honestly wasn't surprised just because a lot of the schools around me had already started closing down. But it was the first time that I realized that COVID would actually be affecting me directly, not just something that I saw in the news or that was affecting people in nursing homes. Like it had a direct effect on me and the way I live my life. Okay, thank you. All right, Carly, can you answer that same question? Sure. So COVID affected me, like the way I felt about it, it changed. At Fordham, there were two big waves. There was the first wave, since we were in New York City, we had like cases and faculty. And so they closed us down briefly um, and sent us all home. So that was like, oh, this is weird. And I walked out of campus being like, this is going to be a museum. This is going to be the way it used to be. But I expected to come back a couple weeks later. And then when we actually closed, that's when I cried and was like, I didn't say goodbye to any of my graduating friends. That was the main thing that was sad wow. for me. Wow. I'm sure that was hard. Wow. <laughs> okay. Jared, same question. So for me, my experience, uh, I'm an RA, a resident assistant on campus at MCSU. And I was still up there until school actually closed completely like for the semester. Oh, so wow. We had started like the, you know, quarantine, I think mid-March. And until I think it was May 15th, I was still on campus, just like making sure people who couldn't get home as soon as everybody else were okay. Um, just really weird. It was just always a ghost town on my campus. It was quiet. I would just walk around and just like hit a bird chirping. So it kind of weighed on me like mentally and emotionally like the first month. And after a while, it just kind of was like, okay, this is how things are going to be. Okay. And then when I moved back home afterwards, I was like, oh, we're going to go back again into this. So it's just been kind of weird. That's my best word for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I know. Okay. When all this started, you went from in-person classes to now you're going to have to do your classes virtually. You did your classes virtually. So I have a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you guys in regards to online classes versus in-person classes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Carly, what do you see as a major difference between online and in-person classes? Uh, for me, the major difference for my arts courses was the discussion-based learning, uh, because that either moved online for my like larger classes. Um, I had one TV theory class that only had eight students, so we could continue doing that on Zoom, and it was like nothing had changed. Uh, my math courses pretty much stayed the same. 
the only thing that went different was lectures were online, but like exams stayed the same. Um, but for me, since I'm a math minor and an arts uh, film and TV major, I had a completely different experience with the arts side that did a 180 turn, but the math basically stayed the same for me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Jared, can you please answer the same question? If you need me to reread it, I can do that as well. Okay, right, so basically the major difference that I noticed was really just the level of interaction with like my classmates and professors. When you're in the classroom itself, like you have a lot more to work with, to talk to people, you see things, you can actually like put yourself in that place of work. And then when you're back in your room and you're like divided by like screens, it's very hard to just get adjusted to that and interacting with your you know, students or your friends in the class or even getting the professor's attention or contacting him could be a little more difficult you know not necessarily just like doing it but just that it's it's so it feels so much more like further away than it would be if you were in the classroom so that's the main difference i would see it's just the level of interaction with everybody okay thank you Teresa. same question um for me it was just the lack of having a classroom because at home there were so many more distractions than i would have on campus so mm -hmm. i wasn't just trying to do my work in a lecture hall like on campus i was trying to do my work while my parents were cooking downstairs and my dogs were barking and i still had to do something else for work and so it was just a lot more to juggle mm -hmm. <laughs> makes sense okay great all right jared yeah. How have you stayed in contact with your professors in an online format, like with their office hours, one-on-one -on -one <laughs> meetings? Honestly, just tons of emails. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was in the email to make sure they got the email that I sent that week. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just email on top of email on top of email. And, like, whenever you're in a Zoom call, because there are going to be a lot more Zoom calls you'll have with, like, your professors with remote online classes. They'll ask, like, do, does anybody have questions for me? Is anybody concerned about anything? Ask them, have you got my email in the Zoom call? <laughs> like, hey, my name is Jerry. I sent you an email about this. Like, that was my main way of just contacting them, just emailing, really. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jerisa, same question. Um, kind of the same thing as Jared, just emailing my professors a lot. Most of my press professors still had office hours, so, and they would have a Zoom meeting and a link, so I could go to office hours that way, but you just kind of have to, like, put in the effort to contacting your professors, because they're definitely not going to contact you first. <laughs> okay. Carly, same question. Uh, going off of what you both already said, tons and tons of emailing, uh, a lot, like, anything, any question that I would have normally, like, asked after class, the professor like, hey, when is this due? Or like, can I bring a calculator to the exam? I had to email those questions. But for like questions about content, online office hours, if you can do online office hours, there's so much better than trying to email for like long form questions, like how do you solve this problem? Um, so, but you have to be proactive because the online office hours, you have to ask for them. Um, sometimes they're already set up, but you have to like really work to get the online office hour contact. And it's not like you can just walk in someone's office like you used to be able to do. <laughs> Definitely, that makes sense. Thanks, guys. Okay, Jerisa, in what ways can students get support in their classes while online, whether it's study groups, essay help, etc.? And then also, which ways have you utilized? Um, on my campus, we had a lot of uh, resources like essay writing help, any like tutoring groups, and a lot of those were pushed online after we left campus. So it was helpful just to go to like their website and set up meetings with their, those advisors. But another thing I did was just having friends in the same class as you uh, that you were in was really helpful because chances are if you're up at 1 a.m. working on an essay or on a question, they're also up at 1 a.m. working on an essay or question and you can kind of bounce ideas off of each other and help each other that way. Great, 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 great. All right, Carly, same yeah. question. Going off what Jerisa said, having like a study group that's the, like students set up with your friends. Like I had one friend who did a final exam study group and just emailed the entire class. Um, and so whoever showed up could, that was really helpful. Uh, also, we had a lot of Slack communication for some of my classes where it was kind of like a discussion board and you could ask questions. Um, but the main difference with Slack is your professor can see everything that you're writing. So like just be cognizant about what you're putting on something like Slack. Uh, yeah, and then group texts, group texts for math homework, highly recommend. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Jared, same questions. Same answer. Just okay. 
having the having friends in like a group that you already kind of good with, and if you don't make the friends, like somebody is definitely struggling with you, you can you can hear people out there talking about it in the class, and, like in Zoom and calls and everything like that. It's like yo, I, I kind of struggle with that same question you asked. You want to try to get together and work on that? So just having that group to work with, and a lot of professors also give out study guides for like exams and things. Have that group just go and break down that entire study guide before the test, and just like have all your notes and maximize your studying potential so yeah okay thank you um also next question carly i believe you're up next i think <laughs> try to keep up with it how have you maintained your focus when taking your online courses i know there are a lot of distractions so how have you maintained your focus for me like focus has been the hardest thing uh, especially like for me focusing in class isn't that much harder like there's stuff out the window to watch but for me the main hard part is focusing on homework so what I found myself having to do was like on my calendar write something and pretend that it's due the day before it's actually due so if my discussion post is due on Friday I would put it on my calendar for Thursday um, and then the other thing I would do because I kept on getting distracted by the internet I would turn off wi-fi whenever I had to like write something so that I couldn't go on YouTube and distract myself <laughs> okay it's a good, good idea. Jared, same question. Yeah, just making schedules. Like, I have, like, an account on my phone, and I would write things, like, like on paper, like, with my notes. Just having that schedule and something simple to, like, go off, like, a plan to get things done really helped me keep my focus. And just, it, I, if I didn't do it, I would just easily forget what I was doing at the hand because I would try to do something, like, in that moment, and I'd be like, you know, I can really clean my room right now. And then I would just clean my room for the next two hours and forget I had an exam or like an essay. So <laughs> definitely make schedules and plan. That's uh, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, Jerisha, you need me to come back to you? Oh, no. Um, okay. It's just treating my online classes as I would my in-person classes. So if I'm going to a lecture on campus, I'm not going to spend the entire time on my phone or sleeping. So even though I can do that while I'm online, I try to make sure that I don't and just kind of keep that same amount of responsibility. The next section is about necessities you would need for school, right? I know y'all think about some of the regular stuff like sheets and towels and all that. But with COVID-19, there's going to be some additional things we may need. So with that being said, um, Jared, what yeah. resources would you recommend to students in order to succeed in college life, whether online or in person? So honestly, <clears throat> like for each, um, each class is going to have their own like textbooks and stuff like that. But internet just if you have internet access you should have it on campus but even if you're at home if you have internet access at home literally everything you need i don't know, search real quick is like right there just look it up and try to find it um for things like specific things like food and like uh clothing i know my campus mt has like these kind of like storages for like you know canned foods and goods people need to eat or we have like a uh, i think called like raider closet which is made for if you need business attire for an interview or like a class or something so I don't think there'll be a lot of classes that'll have you walk into a classroom needing a suit, but if you need that, like you need physical things, your campus should also have that. And yeah, just ask about them. <laughs> okay. Jerisa, same question. Um, for me, the biggest thing that I need is a space for your distractions where I could do my work because if I have a distraction, I will use it. Um, so on campus, that's easy. You can just kind of go to the library or a study room, but I would say even if you're, um, at home um, doing online classes, I would still try and make an effort to find a place where you're not going to be bothered by younger siblings, pets, parents, whatever, where you can just focus on the work that you're doing. That's great. Thank you. Carly, same question. Uh, going off of what Jared said, internet is key. I know at Fordham, before everything was online, you could go to the library. I went a lot of times when my like computer broke. I don't really know what resources will be for your particular school. I know Fordham has an IT department that is working with students to make sure they have like technology and that you can get internet access. Uh, it, like if internet access is a problem, I know my school does some programs to help students get free internet access. So like check if your school does that too. 
Um, and then a necessity that I didn't think about until like my second or third year of college was color coding and highlighting my notes as I'm taking them. So a highlighter to like highlight important formulas or keywords, something I wish I thought of like two years earlier. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is kind of similar to the question I just asked, but if students are unable to obtain some necessities for success, what are some places on campus or online that can provi provide these necessities? And Jerisa, I'll start with you, please. Um, my school had like a specific department that you could email if you had any trouble transitioning online or just anything for school. But even if you don't have that, I would say talk to your professors, talk to your advisor, heck, even your parents, because even if they don't know exactly how to help you, they can probably direct you to someone who does know how to. Okay, great, great. Carly? Yeah, going off what Teresa said, reach out to anyone and maybe they can at least steer you in the right direction. Uh, Fordham, I know IT is big. We also have a counseling service that can also like help you get in the right, like, the right direction. Uh, like financial aid is super helpful if you're trying to figure out a grant to cover something financially. Um, they've helped me a ton of times. So like talk to your financial aid office. They're normally nice. And ask professors or ask anyone and maybe they'll be able to help guide you to the right resource. Great. Thank you. Jared. Uh, same thing. Look up in like directories, departments, um, just people who like run things that are specific for what you're looking for, for resources and ask questions, just ask so many, like if, when you're in a new environment, it's very hard to want to like ask people what, for help. And it can be kind of, you know, you know, anxiety driven, but it's like, if you don't ask, you'll never know, you'll never really get the help you need. So if you see somebody like, uh, like Carlos talking about like a financial office, ask them like, hey, do you guys know anything about scholarships? Do you know anything about, you know, loans? How is this going to help me, you know, to pay off things? There's something like how some of the rate the closet if you need clothing for stuff, you know, just ask questions where to find like, I need business clothing today. I need food at this, uh, um, you know, food closet. Just things like that. Just it's it's there, but if you don't ask about it, you'll never know. So, ask questions. <laughs> yeah, sure, definitely. Thanks, guys. So, Carly, what adjustments will you make when returning to school when considering COVID nineteen? For me, I'm in New York City, so there's so many things that I used to do that I just won't do anymore. Um, one thing for me is I know that if I'm working next semester and I'm in New York City, I won't want to be taking the subway to work. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to make sure that I'm working somewhere that's like, you know, a 45 minute walking distance. And before COVID shut down, I was 30 minutes walk from work. So for me, making sure I have transportation uh, that I feel like is safe and clean is a big one for me. Also, I'm going to completely change the way that I like socialize with my friends. Um, like we aren't allowed to have guests anymore at the dorms. So for most of my friends, I'll be socializing by like walking in the park or club meetings might have to go virtually, but I'm trying to rethink about how I can actually go to college and get everything I need safely. So there's, it's a full 180 for me. Wow. Wow. Jared? Yeah, for me, I've just, I've, I've realized the last uh, semester when everything hit, I just did the worst thing and just stayed in my room for most of my days. Mm -hmm. um, I think my biggest adjustment, other than just keeping my schedule, like I talked about earlier, just like the planning and stuff to keep focused, is getting fresh air when I can. Like, even if it's just right outside my door, like, just standing there and just breathing in some fresh air. Because you'll sit in your room all day and you'll just, you'll just down yourself after a while. So that's my main adjustment, just doing that more often and getting myself out of the house or the, the, the dorm. <laughs> all right, guys. This is, like, great. This is great information. But before we leave this section, anything else you want to add? Like, are you going to take any special cleaning supplies or – you know, or you, I mean, what kind of, are you going to do any of that? Anybody want to add that before we leave this? Uh, great question about cleaning supplies. <laughs> Disinfectant spray for like the air and Lysol wipes. If you can find them, cheat code. Go to like Dollar General or like stores you don't usually go to a lot. They usually have them. Just have a nice amount of that and just be ready to just wipe my door down and like my desk and stuff. But yes, that's about it. <laughs> okay. Stock up on your mask. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mass. Yes. That's who. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'll, I'll need to have a discussion with like all my roommates about who's cleaning what where because we're at like on an on campus apartment with a kitchen. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's a discussion that if we get to go back, we'll all have to have immediately.
So you guys have touched on this a little bit, but depending on which way this thing goes, self-discipline is actually really going to be important when we're dealing with this particular situation. Mm -hmm. So that means from planning to scheduling different things like, so Jared, what kind of things, what are going to be the best ways that you found to keep yourself on track with your responsibility, whether online in person? So I want to preface, <laughs> I, I have not perfected anything. And I know for, especially if you're a first time like student going to college, you're a freshman, you're not going to perfect it just off the rip. It's going to take some time and knowing like, you know, how to adjust with your classes, what time your classes are, what time you wake up, you know, how you plan things, how you get work done. It's kind of like, figuring out your own time management and just balancing things, but finding those ways to simply plan out, just like having like a, a small little checklist, like get this assignment do like get this assignment done in the next couple hours, do this here at this time, you know, make sure you eat. Like I had to schedule when I had to eat. So I would stay in my room and I would not eat for a day. I'd be like, why am I so tired? So simple plans and just give yourself time and practice yourself and, you know, practice your time management. That's really about it for me. Okay, thank you, Jared. Jerisa? Um, the thing that works best for me is literally just blocking out time of my days to focus on specific activities. So if I have an essay due Friday, then I'm going to block out, I don't know, two hours on Monday to only focus on this essay and then another like three hours on Wednesday. Like, but like just have that already scheduled so it's not Thursday night and I'm trying to write a 15 page paper uh, along with all the other stuff that I have to do and then I get very stressed out. Great. All right, Carly, yeah. same question. Going off what Teresa and Jared said, I have not perfected anything, but freshman year, what I did was I took like a calendar that had like a full week on it, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh -huh. And for every hour of class, I blocked off like two hours elsewhere in the week to study for it. And I also like put down what time would I go to say, do my laundry. For me, that was Thursdays at 8.45 because uh, like no one had class at that time and no one was at the laundry room. So I would block like, what am I doing my laundry? When am I going grocery shopping? When am I eating? Because I also forget to eat. Um, so I just literally made a schedule with every hour had something blocked. And I didn't often follow it, but just knowing I had it gave me a way to know this is my like standard for what I should be doing, even if I'm not actually doing it. Well, I'm like mind blown that y'all had to forget to eat. I Listen, I never forgot to eat. Ever, ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> and still don't, okay? So I just want to throw that in there, like bless y'all's heart. Um, also, Jerisa, how should a student seek out opportunities in their major, especially how things have changed now, whether it's like internships or job shadowing? How should a student seek out opportunities? Most universities will have like a job interviewing, like job opportunities, a center or a place where you can go to look for internships, job shadowing. Things are going to look a little different now, but I still know that it's easy to find like remote work, even if you can't go into a place physically, like you can do stuff online. And one thing that's worked for a couple people, if you can't find anything with their university itself, sometimes just emailing uh, companies or emailing organizations, sometimes they'll come back and you say, hey, we'd love to have you and you can find work that way as well. Just put yourself out there. Okay, great. Carly, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, definitely use career services at your, like, at your college. Uh, for me, I've, like, the main internships I've gotten were through Handshake, which is my school goes partners through Handshake. I don't know, a lot of schools do, um, but it's a job board. And also LinkedIn. I've applied to some LinkedIn jobs, like, this week. Um, and another way I have gotten jobs before is if there's a company that you know that you would be a perfect fit for or something like supremely random. Like for me, it was the Broadway League, which did Broadway shows. I like Googled and was like, do they have internships? And so I would just Google companies that I knew were a good fit and that I had the skills for. And then I would like send them my resume. Okay. Oh, that's a great idea. So you young people, y'all do have, uh, y'all do use LinkedIn. Okay. I see you. Okay. Jared. <laughs> Uh, uh, for me, I, so you have an advisor and all your, your advisors should always be major specific to what you're doing. So they'll know what's going on on campus and like their opportunities going around. Um, email them, like you have to email your professors, but you should also be emailing your advisor as much as you can when you can. Um, and have like, you'll have to do like, I know for my campus, our college, you have to make sure you email them or they won't let you register for classes the next semester. So if you don't have at least one uh, meeting with them, you can't register for classes. 
So make sure you talk to them. And also just check your school email because some some people who actually work on the campus and like they're specific to your major as well, they'll just send out emails like mass like mass emails to students like, hey, this label wants to work like I'm music. So they're like this label want somebody for an intern, this some this uh publisher want people who want to write music. Um we have this organization on campus doing this big opportunity. So just if you don't check your emails, you'll never know. So just make sure you do that as well. Gotcha. All right, thank you. Now this next question, I will say um, college, and I'm sure you guys will agree with me, is not the same as high school. If you're not attending class, your parents might get an email <laughs> or get a phone call, um, get written up, go to the principal's office. College is a little different. Mm -hmm. um, what you do is up to you, right? So mm -hmm. Carla, and what, what what are some of the ways you have to motivate yourself to attend class and complete your schoolwork? For me, my freshman year, I knew that if I didn't keep like a 3.0 GPA, I would lose my scholarship and couldn't stay in school. So that was my main motivator that if I wanted to live in New York City and if I wanted to like have an education at Fordham, I had to be going to class. I had to get above a B. And so for me, that was like, it was a fear of failure that motivated me my first year. Mm -hmm. Um, but from then on, I try to find in any class that I'm in, I try to find something that I'm interested in. Like Fordham has weird core requir requirements. I've had to take classes on like Henry VIII for a full semester. And I'm not like, it's not something I would love, but if I find something in Henry VIII that interests me, like finances in the 1500s, that's fascinating. Find something in a class that makes it worthwhile to go to that class, even if you don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Those are good. Thanks, Carly. Jerisa? Um, for me, normally the fact that I'm paying thousands of dollars for these classes <laughs> is enough to get me to go to them. Um, but even kind of beyond that, I like each semester, if I can fit it in my schedule, I try to take a fun class that may have to do with my major, it may not, but something I'm really interested in. And that kind of helps balance out anything that I have to deal with, with like boring general requirements. Okay. Jared? Uh, for me, it was just a self reminder of just like, I love what I do and I want to make this my career and I'm here to do that. So it's like, if I want to stay in this space and this career and I'm paying all this money, like Teresa said, go to class. It's going to be worth the ask options as well. I can't drop my GPA anything below. I think a three point, like, I forgot. It's like this weird random number, but if I drop below that, my scholarship is going to be gone. That's a big help to my, you know, to my, to my learning. So it's like, just keeping yourself motivated is a self thing, really. You know, you want to have the hunger and drive to be to do better and succeed. But just also remind yourself, I'm paying a lot of money for this. So I'm right. not gonna make the most out of it. Right, 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 right. I definitely understand that. So self-discipline is a is a, definitely a big thing that people are gonna need to do. I know me, I have I have to keep a calendar, but I also have to have a pop-up reminder. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I used to keep the calendar where you write it down. That was a disaster. So <laughs> um, any other things that you guys can add for the incoming uh, freshmen for uh, self-discipline? Just add to that how you said pop-ups. If you have a calendar app on your phone, which I think all phones should have them, like just built in, put mm -hmm. everything that you can in that calendar. Especially like professors will give you like that syllabus. Where, like they tell you literally on this day, or on one of these days, this exam should happen, this test should happen, this pop quiz may happen, be prepared for that. You could just have it on your phone and like set a reminder to remind you like a week before, or a few days before. That has saved me so many times because I'll walk into, I forgot to do it, I'll walk into a class and it's like, okay, pop quiz, let's go. I'm like, you didn't say that. And he'll be like, it's on the syllabus. I told you this at the beginning of the year. So just make sure you have that calendar entry for real. Also, like Google Tasks is super helpful for me where it's a checklist and I can put like, do this by Wednesday, do this by Monday, but it's like a list. So right. yeah, it's also inside your Google Calendar. But. Yeah. Cool. There are different apps that I like to use, like one that's like My Study Life. And since it's built for studying, you can like put in exams and then you can also put in, I'm going to study at this point, this point, and this point for this exam. So you can, and you'll get reminders for it and everything. So it kind of helps you plan your life, which I need. <laughs> Now let's get down to some good stuff, right? Some good, good stuff, okay? 
So we're going to talk about the college life. What is that like? Um, I know it'll be a little different when we get back into college, but you guys got a chance to experience some really cool college life. So when we're thinking about stuff like that, uh, Jerisa, what are some of the best ways to get involved with um, social life on campus? Um, most campuses are going to have an orientation for incoming freshmen where you'll be doing a bunch of activities. Um, you get to look at different classes, look at the different clubs. So I would say take advantage of those as much as you want. Because most of my friends came from a club that I was joining. And then um, also like try and interact with your roommates and see like, oh, hey, you want to get dinner? Like try and reach out to them. You can form a good bond with them as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Carly. Yeah, so for me, like Jerisa, almost all of my friends who I don't live with are from clubs that I've joined. So for me, most of my friends come from songwriting club and I you know, love it because we're all like music nerds and it's great. So even though I'm not studying music, I have people who surround me with similar interests. Uh, also get to know your roommates. I've had like various roommates, some that I am friends with, best friends, some that I'll never talk to again, um, <laughs> but get to know them. And if you click, then that's great. And maybe you can even live with them again. Um, oh yeah, and then also just befriend people from your classes. Like one of my best friends, we met in a history class that neither of us really wanted to take, but she had like a theater water bottle and I was like, oh, you're a theater person. So yeah, talk to everybody in your classes. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, thanks Carly. Jared? Yeah, for me, it was mainly just organizations and just getting involved by meeting other people from classes or just like certain things. I know since I'm I'm mainly music and music business. I would find kids who had their laptops out and be producing. They'd be in like a cafeteria or like in the main building for like production and audio engineering. I'm just like, you got FL Studio? Like that's the program I work in. And I'll just talk to them. And then it's like, yeah, my friends do this too. His friends got friends. We're going to go to the studio. And that's how I like really met a lot of people. Um, I've met people just from like, like people who do like design and fashion. We have a fashion show on campus with actually two of them. And I help curate the music for that a few times met a lot of people from like models to you know actual like people who do fashion design it's like just really bare opportunities that you just have to talk to people and get involved with people side note be genuine in those conversations with people like as you get older and you'll learn while you're going through college you tend to spend more time with people who are genuine with you and who have more of a prioritization with you so think of that on the flip side if somebody doesn't really want to prioritize you because they don't think you're genuine you're probably not going to have a lot of social life on college. So just be yourself, be genuine, be honest, and have a great relationship with people. Okay, cool. All right. Some more good stuff. Carly, I remember on your last answer, you said you have some roommates that are your best friends and some that you probably never talk to again. So how should you approach roommate disputes? What advice would you give? Um, let's see, my roommates are bombarding my text messages right now, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but it took me until, like, junior year to have roommates that I actually, like, totally got along with all of them in my suite. We are apartment style, so I've had, like, three roommates. I've had five roommates. Um, main conflicts for me were, like, I have different priorities than a lot of my roommates, and I'm, like, I'm a study person. I'm not a party person. Um, so when, like, I set boundaries pretty early on that I was like you can have your party in the common room but if you have alcohol out I'm going to be in my room studying so like it was pretty clear with my roommates like I didn't want to be involved if they got caught for stuff so that was always the give and take for me was like how do I be kind to them and like them as people but like not be involved when they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing that that was my big struggle <laughs> okay all right Jerisa how would you approach roommate disputes um, yeah, I was actually really lucky and I got really good roommates my freshman year. But um, one thing I will say is having a roommate agreement at the beginning of the year is so helpful. So like if when you first meet them after you get settled in, like say like, okay, do this, don't do this. We're clean the bathroom this often, or uh, you can have people over this many times this month and kind of have everyone agree to those rules at the start. And then later on, if people start breaking those rules or if there's some type of disagreement, it's really helpful to have that to go back to. And it kind of helps with the conflict. Okay. All right. Now, Jared, I heard you say you are a resident assistant. Yeah, so, so come on, give us something I'm, good when it I'm comes to the, approaching. I'm going to piggyback on what Jerisa was saying. So come from an RA standpoint, we give out these things called, as you said, roommate agreements so that it's kind of like, it's like this checklist of like, okay, 
Are you, do you like to be loud or do you like to be quiet? Do you like to do this or do that? And it's just like you go through it with your roommate and it's like, okay, compare it, see how it is. And you set boundaries there. Um, some people I've seen have skipped it and it always goes wrong when you skip that process because then it's like two months in, it's like, well, bro, I've been doing this all the time. You never say anything. Why are you mad now? So just communicate, set boundaries as soon as you can. Make sure everybody's on the same page. If things continue to happen, talk to your RA. You should have an RA on campus with you. If you don't, that's very weird, but you should. <laughs> and just contact them and be like, this can't work for me. Maybe we got to do something else. They'll try to set up a meeting. They'll try to, you know, contact their uh, AC, you know, or their RD, uh, resident director and area coordinator. And if that doesn't work, the last resort, but usually it never happens, is move outs. You just be like, you know what? I just need a new room. And then you move, get someone new, and you hopefully have a better roommate. But I'm an RA, so I've had a roommate since freshman year. I don't have to do it no more. <laughs> but if you do, at least have that at hand so that you're good. Okay. All right. Last but not least, I'm going to come back to you real quick, Jared. Okay. How should someone deal with homesickness? Your first time being away from home and, you know, what are some good ways to deal with being homesick? So first, let me say, you always go into college thinking, man, I'm not going to miss it. I'm, a, I'm not going to miss home. I'm going to be good. My parents will be fine without me. And there's going to be that one day where you had that really tough day and it's just like, now it's my mom. Like, <laughs> you just you just miss your, your you know, your mom, your pops, your cousins, whoever you live with. And so they're in the back of their mind thinking the same thing. They just miss you. The house is lonely. If you have the time, call. If you don't have the time to call, text. If you got email, email them. If you got a group message, do that. You know, just find a way to just contact them. And I live literally like 40 minutes away. I'm in Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro, and that's just like 40 minutes away from where I'm at. If you have a time to go to a weekend trip, do that as well. Just like a quick little trip to go down. But make sure you do your work before you do that so you're not home trying to work on everything because you made that time for family and friends. So that's my main thing. Call if you can. If not, text. Gotcha. All right, uh, Jerisa? Um, kind of agreeing with Jared here. Call them. I guarantee you they miss you just as much as you miss them. And um, one thing that helped me because I am 11 hours away from home is trying to find the things that I liked at home in my new place. So one thing I really enjoyed uh, before COVID happened was going downtown and exploring different restaurants, going to see different sites, things like that. So when I was in Baltimore, I got a group of friends and we went down to uh, Baltimore to explore the city, see the different parks and the different restaurants. And it kind of helped deal with any homesickness I was feeling. Okay, cool. Last but not least, Carly. Okay. I was thinking about this and I feel bad. Like I like my family. I just never missed them. <laughs> I would call them all the time. And so like my family, we would call like almost every night and like my best friend from high school for like the past three years, even though we're 900 miles away, like we call three times a week. So I would stay in contact with people. Um, one thing I would always do is get out of the room because like Jared said earlier, I have to get out of the room. You'll drive yourself crazy. So I would get out of the room and I would go for a walk and that's when I would call my family. So I would kind of like try to get exercise and talk to my parents all at the same time multitasking okay anybody in as far as college life anything that we missed out on that you think that would be helpful to share i have one thing okay my thing that i found freshman year is like everyone thinks that everyone else has their life together and then sooner or later you figure out that everyone was a mess freshman year and so don't be intimidated when you look around and you think like your roommates are perfect. For example, like my freshman year, my roommates were models. And like one of my roommates is a Calvin Klein model now. And I was like, they have their lives together. Like, and I am me. And then you realize later, no one actually had their lives together. It doesn't matter if they have a career. It doesn't matter if they have like a perfect family. No one actually has it together. And it's all a facade. And that made me feel better eventually. <laughs> yeah, that's my Okay, take. that's good. That's good. I want to feedback on that too. Because you can really... We, we we try not to, but it's a name that we compare ourselves to others. And so it's like, you see somebody who is like, oh man, they're going out to parties, but they're still upper class and doing this and doing that. And then if you saw from their life, their perspective, they're probably thinking, I'm doing so much. I'm stressed every day. So just just focus on you. Don't, don't worry about the outfits you're wearing when you go out, because honestly, nobody's really caring that much how you look. Somebody's checking the class. Or it'll be raining one day. It's like, I'm not caring about this dude's wear, with shoes. I'm trying to get out this rain. It's like, just focus on you. Focus on your friends, your priorities, and just do what you can. 
and kind of a different note, but we didn't talk about Quizlet. Quizlet will be so helpful for you. <laughs> Ask your homies if they can make a Quizlet group or like a Quizlet, like no, no cards and flashcards. Um, don't cheat. Don't copy and paste. They will know. <laughs> they have the resources to find out that you're doing that. But Quizlet is also a very helpful tool that I've used my last few years at college. And that's all I want to add. <laughs> okay, cool. Anyone else? All right, guys. Thank you so much. And I know this information that you all gave is going to be helpful to parents and all our incoming freshmen. Um, I, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart taking this time out of your busy schedules. And I know some of you are getting ready to go back to college. So I wish you all the best of luck. And I know you guys will do well. Like I said, you're all going to be famous. So please don't forget me and not <laughs> act like you don't know me, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.